Satali Kadugashika, Imaka Kasutu. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, let the church continue to experience supernatural growth after the order of the heart of the apostles, thereby turning her into a city with our walls all through this prophetic season. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the church continue to experience supernatural growth after the order of the heart of the apostles, thereby turning her into a city with our walls all through this prophetic season. Or through this prophetic system. Let's appreciate him. Let's begin to thank God. Let's thank him because he will do it. This church will continue to experience supernatural growth. And add that in, in the order or in the heart after the order of the hearts of the apostles. And this church shall be turned into a city with our world. Or through this prophetic system. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's thank him. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's take our seat. Shout hallelujah. Shortly we are going to stand on feet again to intercede this morning. We are going to pray in this manner. Father, in the name of Jesus, give every one of our new convert and new member in this church a testimony of once I was blind, now I can see that they may be established in faith and this church say amen. Bible says in the book of John chapter 9 verse 25, and he answered and said, whether he be a sinner or not, I know not. One thing I know, that I was blind, now I can see. Praise God. I used to, say to pray that prayer, can we stand our feet and lift our voice this morning and say, Father, give all our new convert and new member in this church a testimony of once I was blind, now I can see. Lift up a voice and pray that prayer for all our new convert and all our new members. Give them a testimony, whatever challenge they have experienced before because they are here in our midst. Give everyone a testimony of once I was blind, now I can see. In the name of Jesus, let every new member and all the new convert receive a testimony of their visitation, receive a testimony of their healing, of their open door in this service. In the name of Jesus, lift up a voice and pray and give to our heart for all our new convert and new member. In the name of Jesus. Father, give all our new convert and new member of the church a testimony of once I was blind, I can see in this covenant day of open door. Cause all our new members and new a father and new convert to experience open door in all their endeavors. In the name of Jesus, no one shall return the same way they came. In the name of Jesus, Father, you are the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for you to do? Father, 
give all our new converts a new member in this church a testimony of once I was blind, now I can see they were established in faith and in this church in the name of Jesus. No one shall return the same way they came in the name of Jesus. Visit them in this kind of open door, open door that no man can open for them in the name of Jesus. Father, visit us, visit our new convert, visit all our new members in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost. Give them a testimony, even in this service. Give them a testimony, even in this service, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, answer our prayer this morning, in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you this morning. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. It is done. Put your hand up for Jesus and take your seat. Put your hands some more for Jesus. <laughs> Announcement time. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to this special service tagged Covenant Day of Open Doors. Tell your neighbor you will have an open door today. Every closed door against every worshiper shall be reopened in this service. It shall be a service so to be much remembered. Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday, 4th July, to Saturdays, and the time is 6 to 7 a.m. daily. Everyone is encouraged to be part of it. Good news. The admission into Covenant University for the 2022-2023 academic session is ongoing. All qualified uh, to log on to the university website is right now on the screen, www.admission.covenantuniversity as one word, .edu .ng, for details of the application process. Praise the Lord. Entrance examination into Faith Academy Network of Schools. The sale of admission forms for 2022-2023 academic session is ongoing. A, JS1 supplementary. B, transfer admission to JS2 and SS1. The online sale of admission forms to Faith Academy Network for JS1 supplementary admission as well as JS2 and SS1 transfer admission is ongoing. To purchase form, please visit Education Commission's official website. It's right now on the screen as well, www.ecl fcww.org. For more information, check the notice board just at the front of the church. Week of Spiritual Emphasis. The Week of Spiritual Emphasis for the month of July begins on Wednesday 6th through to Friday the 8th of July 2022. Within these days, we shall be waiting upon the Lord in a fast and shall be converging daily here in the sanctuary to break our fast with prayers, the word, and the communion. Time for the service is 5 p.m. daily. For the payment of tithes, offerings, and thanksgiving seed, the account name is LFC Uyo e-payment accounts. It's right now on the screen. The account number is 122 Four one six one one nine seven, and the bank is Zenith Bank. For the payment of Shiloh pledges and sacrifice, use the following details. Same on the screen. Account name is LFC Uyo Shilo as one word. Sacrifice account. An account number is one zero one four two nine four six six three, and the bank is Zainet. Believers Foundation class holds this morning, immediately after the covenant greeting, after the service. All new converts, first-time worshippers, as well as old members who haven't been part of this class are admonished to attend. The venue is the Kingdom Heritage Model School facility. Water baptism. Water baptism by immersion comes up on Saturday, 
the 9th of July by 7 a.m. This is for all who have not been baptized by immersion. You are to take note and be in attendance. The venue is at the Kingdom Heritage Model School facility. Come along with a change of raiment. Elders Forum. The Elders Forum meeting comes up on Saturday the 9th of July by 11 a.m. prompt. Venue for this meeting is the Teens Church. Good news, good news, good news. God has blessed the family of Mr. and Mrs. Mfoniso David Ukong with a bouncing baby boy. The baby arrived on Thursday, the 30th of June, and the covenant naming comes up on Thursday, the 7th of July, at their residence at number 26 Faith Road, Uyo, off Kemba Street, by 3 p.m. Traffic and ushering units, home of Grace Home Cell, and Canaan Land District members are to take note and be in attendance. All WSF operators and leaders are reminded to submit yesterday's cell meeting reports at the home cell desk just at the entrance of the church or via the use of the approved WhatsApp numbers. Youth Alive Leadership Advance. There shall be a special Youth Alive Leadership training immediately after the third service. All youths are to make themselves available for this special training. All executives of the Youth Alive Fellowship are to be in the training. The books of the month. The books of the month, as authored by our father, Bishop David Yedekbo, are Anointing for Breakthrough. Not by power, nor by might. Understanding the anointing. Anointing for exploits. The release of power, manifestation of the Spirit. And you may do well to also take the Holy Bible, King James Version, is 1,500. All of these books are available at the bookshop just at the other church entrance. Good news. <laughs> Next Sunday, at Living Faith Church of Corribido shall be our special communion service, tagged Covenant Day of Restoration. It shall be a special communion service. Expect definite encounters by the word and the communion. The time for the services this coming Sunday are first service, 6.30 a.m., second service, 8.30 a.m., and third service, 10.30 a.m. Invite someone as we are all encouraged to bring a brand new soul to the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. You can do better. Better for Jesus. Hallelujah. In the book of Exodus 23 and 25, the Bible says you shall serve the Lord your God. And he will bless thy bread and thy water. So we take sickness far from you. He said, none shall be barren in the land. And the number of your days is shall fulfill. In this covenant day of open door, it is testimony time. Please, you can do better as we make welcome Elder Evan Young Williams. Elder Evan Young Williams, please come. Dickiness Uguchi Tobi. Dickiness Uguchi Tobi. The faster you clap, the faster they call. Please, your name and your testimony in one minute. Praise the Lord. I am here at this exalted altar to return all glory to God, who is my defense, and Jesus the referee. He defended me until on Thursday when the first victory whistled 
went up for first half at 74 good years. I am not, I see how lucky I am. Today, open door. I am telling you, only the issue at the first half was 17 good years ago that I made dead one and one. I tell God I'm not going to die. The devil struck, accident, clear all these magic. Today, I'm still alive. Whether, whether it's it or not, it, I'm alive. I have been, <laughs> I have been married, I have been married for the past 48 good years. That's my beautiful way. My grandchildren are grandchildren. So, I am now saying, none of you here. Celebrate Jesus as sent for is still young and kicking. Hallelujah. Your name and what the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, let's listen to these other testimonies. Praise the Lord. My name is Ogechi Tobi. I want to bless the name of the Lord for not allowing my family... Please, let's maintain silence. Hallelujah. I want to bless the name of the Lord for not allowing my family to mourn. Papa, by divine direction, uh, made the winner's family to do anointing all through the month of June. My younger sister, the winners in Portacot, she said on 29th, she finished washing and went to throw water. She remembered something slipped her, and that was all. She fell. Her neighbor that was washing also saw her and said she just heard boom. She fell with her head, with her head on the floor, the back of her head, and that was that. She passed out. She, they were reviving her. The woman was calling her, her, her daughter was crying. They went and carried water and poured her. She, was, she couldn't stand up. They also poured her another water. She said she saw herself in darkness. And she now saw, heard her name in darkness. And she walked out of darkness and came back to life. I want to give God all the glory. Lift those hands and magnify the name of the Lord that do her. In this camp, there shall be no loss in the name of Jesus. Can the church shout, thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together. If those hands were for Jesus, you can make them bigger and better. Praise the Lord. It's my privilege in this service to bring to us the prophetic focus for the month of July 2022. More than conquerors greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God for taking us through the mystery embedded in the world. All through the month of June, may everyone's encounter with the world remain an asset in the journey of life. As we all know, every word of scripture is valid for all times, but applicable only to those who choose to receive and believe them. May every one of us remain committed to the validity of the word and the integrity of God who gave the word all through the days of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. What then is the Holy Ghost saying for the month of July 2022? Behind every move of God on the earth today, which is called a revival, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit remains the mastermind to, of every revival today as the quickening reviving spirit. The following are the manifestations of the revival ministry of the Holy Spirit across scriptures. One, the first man was made of clay and after God breathed his spirit into this clay, it was quickened and became a living soul. Two, we see in the prophetic valley of dry bones as narrated in the book of Ezekiel how that the wind of God that is the Holy Spirit blew, and there arose from the same valley a mighty host unto God. Again, we see the Holy Ghost come upon the disciples in the upper room, which resulted in the first revival of the early church. Therefore, what we call the Acts of the Apostles today is actually the Holy Ghost at work in the life of God's people. In addition, 
in a revival, the Holy Spirit one stirs conviction that leads to massive conversion. Two, empowers the prayer lives of believers. Three, stirs the flow of revelation. Four, empowers believers to be effective witnesses for Christ. Five, is the grand commander of signs and wonders. And six, is the spirit of wisdom that builds and sustains revival fire, resulting in supernatural church growth. Furthermore, we recognize that revival times are seasons of glory all through the ages. Every revival is ordained to restore the redemptive dignity of believers that is from transform transformation of our lives to supernatural impact on our societies, thereby making us a showpiece to the world around us. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of July 22 is seasons of glory. The anchor scripture for the month is Isaiah 61 and verse 1 through to 8. The recommended books for the month as uttered by Bishop David Oedipo include One Not by Power Not by Might, Anointing for Breakthrough, Understanding the Anointing, Anointing for Exploit, Release of Power, Manifestation of the Spirit. All these titles are available on www.domionlinestore.org, Amazon Store and Apple Online Store. Remain ever blessed, Bishop David O. Oyedepo. Give Jesus a big, big clap of him. Praise the Lord. Amen. This morning, I have the privilege of welcoming people that are worshiping with us for the first time on a Sunday morning. You have been coming every other day, but today is the first Sunday you're worshiping with us this morning. Please, I am referring to you. Shall you stand on your feet wherever you are? In the main auditorium, the overflow, the gallery, please, wherever. Church, give a hand of praise to Jesus. It's a good God to be appreciated for having brought these ones. In the name of Jesus. Please, while you're still standing, you listen to these few things we are going to say. Number one, our church officials, I'm sure, are going to give to you a form. Please fill those forms, supply the information that is needed so that the church can reach out to you. On behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, God's servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Uyedekpo, and the state pastor, Pastor John Adeleko, I welcome you to Winner's Chapel, he called Ebidoku. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that this is the mountain of God. It is also the city of refuge. That means that from this moment, every siege in your life is destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. We also want you to understand that every believer has an appointed place where he or she will have his or destiny fulfilled. For you, this is that place in Jesus' mighty name. So what is expected of you is to abide and settle in this church. And then believe every word you hear from this pulpit and then endeavor to apply them to your life, put them into practice in Jesus' mighty name. Therefore, I welcome you to this home of signs and wonders. Today, be expectant that God will give you answers in every department of your life in Jesus' mighty name. Particularly, today is also a covenant day of open doors. Hallelujah. That means every door that was shut against you will be open today for you in Jesus' mighty name. Church, shall we point our hands in their directions and begin to pour blessings upon them as the God that brought them this morning to reach out to them, meeting them at the point of their needs, visiting them in, the, in every area of their lives. Father, thank you. We magnify your name, our God. You are the one that went out of your way to bring all these ones to church this morning. You did not bring them here in vain, but you brought them here to bless them, Lord. Let their blessings be given to them this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we agree as a church, let every short door against them be opened in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, our God, because we know you have answered. For we pray believing you in Jesus' mighty name. Please sit down. God bless you. The church, put your hands together unto the Lord.
shout hallelujah. Let us listen to the epistle from the President Living Faith Church Worldwide. And it is to all mission stations. And the subject is declaring Operation Reach to the Stars. More than conquerors greeting to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We recognize that every child of God is redeemed a star after the order of Christ. Revelation 22, 16 and John 17, 18. But there is what we must do to cause our star to shine forth. Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Among others, we discover that wisdom is what makes stars in the kingdom. As we saw in the following examples, Joseph, Daniel, Solomon, Paul, and Christ, our perfect example, is the wisdom and the power of God. However, according to scriptures, among others, he that wins souls is wise, and the wise shall inherit glory. Proverbs 11.30 and 3.35. God is committed to make stars out of believers who are dedicated to same people brought into the kingdom in their numbers. This is why I believe there shall be the rise of an army of giants from this church. Shout amen. The kind the world has never seen in terms of numbers from one platform. But I've often said here, there is no star without a scar. And the scar of every star is sacrifice. Philippians 2, 9-11. We also discover that global impact is the lot of only those who are willing to stretch themselves towards kingdom advancement endeavors as driven by their passion for God. Luke chapter 12, 49 to 50, and John 18, 37. There shall be raw confirmation of the prophetic word from Daniel, as it is written, and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Daniel 12, 3. Furthermore, Prophetically, the midst of the year is ordained a season of revival, and at the same time, a season of the rise of giants. Habakkuk 3, 1 to 2, then 17 to 19. As we all know, the midst of the year is made up of two months of June and July. So we look forward to a time of divine visitation that will lead to a supernatural transformation both as a church and as individuals. Say amen. amen. To this end, for the month of July, beginning from Monday 3rd to Sunday 31st, we shall be embarking on Operation Reach for the Stars across our churches worldwide. Echo it with me, Operation Reach for the Stars. As we all know, our kingdom advancement endeavors include a passionate drive towards salvation of souls, praying kingdom advancement prayers, and commitment to seeing our new converts established in the faith and in this church, among others. May each one receive the grace to reach God's benchmark of many in our soul-winning endeavors this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Say a bigger amen. amen. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. David O. Oyedepo. Give a clap offering unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord and more than a conqueror. Congratulations. So take us further into this service. It is offering time. I say it is offering time. Let's draw our strength from the book of Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. The Bible says, Then Isaac sowed in that land and received the same year an hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. That shall be our testimony in the name of Jesus. With that understanding, please, may we package our offerings, our tithes, our kingdom investments, whatever be the vow you have made to God, openly or secretly, 
it is time to package them and label them accordingly. Please, if you are raising a check, let it be in favor of Living Faith Church, will you? At the back of the check, write your functional phone number. If you are paying online, the platform shall be displayed on the screen for you to follow. If you are using the POS, you can go to the bookshop and use that facility. If you have done all this, packaging them, label them accordingly, please may we rise as we present our offerings unto God. Lift it up above your head. Give God thanks. Appreciate him for the privilege he has given to you not to come to his house empty-handed. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful privilege to sow as Isaac sowed. And Father, you are no respecter of persons. He said in that same year, he received a hundredfold. Lord, as we sow our seed today, let us receive a thousandfold in the name of Jesus. Let it come to you like a sweet-smelling savour. Let it be acceptable unto you, Lord. Even today, being a covenant of open doors, by these offerings, we shall encounter open doors in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know our offerings have been received in Jesus' most precious name. Please sit down and cast your offering with joy as we invite the choir to minister.
Come and lift up your voice and give the God of open heavens the praise this morning. Lift up your voice and give him the glory and the honor. Celebrate Jesus this morning. Celebrate Jesus this morning. Celebrate Jesus this morning. We are under and open heavens. Celebrate Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. This month is your seasons of glory. Seasons talks about a dispensation of time. That is, God is a God of times and seasons. Everything about him has been pre-planned. We are just discovering what he planned and entering into them. And we are announcing that this month has brought you in head-on collision with the program of God. Seasons of glory. Glory means splendor. Splendor. Fatness. Bigness. That is, you will go from glory to glory. You keep changing size. That is, this month you will change many times. Amen. You keep going from one level of glory to another level of glory, from another level of glory, from another level of glory. I prophesy to you that you will not miss any level this month. Amen. Whatever glory you have seen now, there's a greater one coming. And you won't miss any. Amen. You won't lose any. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And um, our anchor scripture, Isaiah 61, reading from verse 1 to 8, our anchor scripture for the month. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. So, it's a month of the spirit. The spirit coming on you in particular. And making a difference with you. And then he went on and he said, because the Lord has anointed me to preach. Now, when you read on, you find out, he said, the spirit of the Lord God has come upon me and turned me to another person. To preach to the captive. Now, I'm the one who was a captive before. But the spirit of the Lord has come on me and has made me a deliverer of the captives. And then in verse 2, he sp spoke there about to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. When God accepts you, no one can refuse you. So this month, God is saying he's accepting you and wherever you have been rejected, the story will change. And then he goes on, he said, verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. So it's a month of appointments. Appointments. Appo Somebody's story will change overnight here. It's a month of appointments. Of appoint doesn't matter who you are and where you are. There's a new position for you. It's a month of appointment. A month of appointment. And then verse 4. He said, and they shall build the old ways places. Uh, whatever is deemed as old in your life and forgotten, it will come back to the burner this month. That is, whatever you have lost, God is getting it back for you. They shall build the old waste places. I said something in the first service. Somebody is there who bought a land many years. You don't even, you can't even imagine how you will start. But this month you will start. 
And uh, before this month is over, you will go so far, you will be so confident. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's what this month is about. You will build this month. Yeah. And then verse 5, he said, strangers will stand. That means you will be an employer of labor. And then verse 6, he said, and ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. He said, and ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. Come on now. So it's a month for plenty. For plenty. God will visit you with plenty. Yeah. And verse 7, he said, for your shame, ye shall have double. Every issue of shame this month is brought under. Yeah. Double for your shame. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. So, get said, it's a month of double. Double blessing, double liftings, double encounters, double experience in glory in the name of Jesus. And verse 8, finally, for I, the Lord, love judgment. Now, every devil on your way will be judged this month. You know, for you to be lifted, sometimes some people have to go. For you to rise, some people have to go down. And it's like that. So, whatever must go down will go down that you may rise. In the name of Jesus. I welcome you to your seasons of glory. You are going from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. In the name of Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus as you please take your seat. Psalm 126, we read that at uh, the beginning of the service, and God spoke that word to us just at the opening of the month. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. So it's a month of again and again experience of good. When the Lord turned again, it's a month of turn, turn. Some people will see 360 degrees turn this month. That is where you will turn to. will have no reference to where you are coming from. The gap will be so wide. Even you can't imagine it. That is it me who is like this? Is it my matter that has become like this? He said, when the Lord turned. And he, you see the word when has to do with time. I'm going to be showing to you in a few minutes. A dispensation of time has come upon us. That you need to be aware of it. You need to be aware of it. God is always working. People miss it because they don't get to know what God is doing part time. He said, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. He said, verse 2, then was our mouth filled with laughter. You are laughing this month. I said, you are laughing this month. And our tongue we sing in. And then he said, then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. That is, God will do for you what the whole world will notice. That is, they will see it. They will see it. He will do for you what the world will notice. What the world will notice. And then he said, in verse 3, the Lord has done great things for That is, as they were saying it, we responded. I, I said that uh, it would be a word in the first service. I mean, four, do. I mean, four. That is, I'm the one. It's me. They will be saying, hey, the Lord has done great for Then I will tell them, I mean, four. It's me. Yes. It's me like this. I'm the one. You didn't make mistake. You didn't make mistake. Where you have been rejected, you will be accepted this month. They will look for you from everywhere this month in the name of Jesus. And then he said there, the Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. And verse 4, turn again. Say with me, turn again. So again and again and again you shall be turned. By the power of the Holy Ghost, he will be turning you and turning you and turning you. Verse 5. Verse 5, he said, they that so in tears shall reap in joy. In order for you to experience what God is doing this month, you have to engage actively. You have to engage actively. You have to, there is that time when you should give in everything. Are you following what I'm saying? 
give him everything, engage actively. And then he said in verse 6, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. It's your month of harvest of good. You will reap great blessings this month in the mighty name of Jesus. So don't forget this. It's a month of again and again. He'll be turning you and 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 turning you in the mighty name of Jesus. So all through this month in the Sunday services, our topic is understanding the blessedness of a revival. I'll be looking at part 1B. The first service was wonderful. You should get the tip and be blessed by it. Or listen to it online. And then be blessed again and again and again. Understanding the blessedness of a revival. Now, we serve a God of times and seasons. He said in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, he said there is a time, a season, and time for every purpose of God. Our God is a God of times and seasons. Everything about him has been preplanned. That's why your greatest testimony will not surprise God. He's expecting it. He's expecting it. He's expecting it. So we serve a God of times and seasons. A season of God. Dispensation of time. When God is doing some things, when God wants to do some things, the good thing is he always announces it first. He always announces it first. In Luke 19 verse 44, we are told Jesus came into Jerusalem and he wept over Jerusalem. Why was he weeping? He said because they know not their time of visitation. They know not their time of visitation. When you don't know your time, then you won't know what you should expect. When you don't know your time, you will not know what you should expect. And if you don't know your time, then Satan is free to fill it up with anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, the people of the other faith, when anything happens to them, they say it's God who brought it. But for us, in this faith, we know what God can bring and what he can bring. So you can say no to some things. No, this is not from God. <laughs> That's why he gave us his word. So we can know his time. We can know what he's doing. We can know what he wants to do. That's why he gave us his word. So we must be very sensitive to time. Time and seasons. We must be sensitive to God's timetable. God's timetable. As a pastor, I get to anywhere, I always will ask God. Because no two places are the same. What am I here for? What is it about this place? What is in me they need here? Show it to me. Help me. Every, because every place are not the same. The problem with some people is they treat everybody and everything the same. Everybody are not the same. Every place is not the same. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And then you have to understand this. So our God is a God of times and seasons. So glad to announce to you that a season, a dispensation of God has come upon us. Every middle of the year, the Bible says God revives his people. Every middle of the year. June, July are times of heavenly revival. Habakkuk chapter 3, reading from verse 2. Reading from verse 2. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst. Mist means middle. Middle of the years. And take note of the word years. That talks about it's a continuous thing till Christ comes. And yet every middle of the year, God visits his people. God visits his people. 
in the midst of the year, make known, make known what? Make known your power. He has always been there, but in the middle of the year, he shows up to announce, I am here. And I am here means some things are happening. God's presence is announced with happenings. With happenings. With proofs. With proofs. With proofs. So, we are in the midst of the year, middle of the year, and God uniquely reveals himself in the middle of the year to his people. And the revelation of God in the midst of these people is what we call revival. That's what we call revival. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has always been around me, but he just came upon me. And coming on me makes a difference. These are now the things that will be happening. The things that was troubling me, I become the one who solves it for others now. Things have changed. I become a builder. Things have changed. For my shame, I will have double. Those are the experiences when you come under a revival. We are under a revival. The spirit of God is moving in an unusual fashion over our lives this month. This is God's season. In Joel chapter 2 from verse um, 21 down to 29, we see another rendition of these. He said, fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Every revival times are times when God chooses to do great things. Now, is every day your birthday? Uh, when is your birthday? You will now wear all your under uh, under portmanteau dress. Eh? Eh, you saw Eva Young this morning. <laughs> With that, I've not seen uh, a robe as long as that before in my life. But, uh, <laughs> but I saw it this morning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Eh, and that's how we all are on our birthdays. So there are unique days in our days. Somebody says it's not the same spirit of God. Ah, no, yes, it's the same spirit of God. But middle of the year is a unique season. It's a uni and you have to be aware of it. You must be aware of it and engage in it and take advantage of it. And take advantage of it. He said he will do great things. Give me verse 22 now. And then he went on and on. He said, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of, of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth our fruit. Those are the things that happen when the Holy Ghost moves in a revival. Everything resets itself. There is restoration. There is a rearrangement. There is a rebooting. Now you know every computer or any of all these things we use, when you use them to a point they hang, all of them have button you press to reboot. That means reboot means starts all over again. Start from the beginning. So every midst of the year is reboot time. Anything happening to you you don't understand, reboot. Reboot. That is, okay, I'm confused now. Okay, midst of the year, reboot. The Holy Ghost who made you, who made all things for you, comes to reset all things. So it's a time for new experience. New engagement. Now, give it back to me. And then verse, um, he said, be glad then. So, it's a time to be excited. You have to be excited. Always excited. That's part of the requirement for the experience that this time holds. Ye children of the, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you moderately the former rain. So, revival is like the rain. You know, when rain falls, it touches everybody. That's why every revival when God moves, it is for everybody. Before, you are the one looking for God. Now, God is the one coming for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, he's the one coming for you. So, it's like the rain. Now, verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat. One major, all mark of revival is plenty. Plenty, plenty. The poor will be rich. The destitute will have what to eat. Plenty, plenty. Somebody is here. They will remember you from far this time. Yeah. Uh, left, right, and center, you will continue to be blessed. Yeah. And then 
he went on, he said, the floors will be full of which the fat shall overflow. We have verse 25. He said, I will restore to you. Come on now. It's a season of restoration. I will restore to you. Anything the devil took, I will give it back. I will restore to you. Then the years, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, don't mind all those names. They are all just descriptions. Yeah, all the worms of life. Whatever they have eaten in your life, he said, I will restore. So this is a time of restoration. Wherever the enemy has had the last laugh on you, you will have the last laugh now. Yeah. Your own laugh is coming. And at this time, in the name of Jesus. And then he went on. He said, verse 26. He said, and ye shall eat in plenty. Can you see plenty again? And be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you. So God will do wonders in your life this time. And my people shall never be what? Ashamed. So every shame will be rolled away. Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. That is, look, what you call revival is God tabernacling in the midst of his people. God coming into the midst of his people. So you are looking for him. Now he's the one coming to you. Revival is God coming into the midst of his people. And every middle of the year, this is what God does. Now, go on please. He said, and verse 28, it shall come to pass afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. That's what we are saying. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Everybody, everybody. When the Holy Ghost came down on the day of Pentecost, he came on everybody. All of them. All of them. When the Holy Ghost came down in the house of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, verse 44, he came on everybody. Every revival time is everybody's time, no matter who you are. Housewife, house husband, anybody. We are all entitled to a race, to a lift at this time. Young, old, man, woman, everybody. Everybody. This is your time. This is your time. This is your time. In the mighty name of Jesus. So revival is the move of the spirit among his people. And every move of God is ordained to move God's people forward. To move God's people forward. If you don't understand anything at all, understand it that God will empower you to go forward. Whatever forward means to you, you can describe it by yourself. Are you hearing me? I'm making progress by the power of God. I'm going forward. I'm going forward. I'm going forward. Every revival is divine visitation. Just like I said, you are the one looking for God before. Now God comes to look for you. It's just like you have water in the ocean. The ocean is full of water. You want water, you go there to take. But, but there is a time when the waves in the ocean will rise. And by itself, it comes to you at the shore. Uh, sometimes it goes beyond the shore, like the tsunami that uh, we all remember happened. And when it comes, it sweeps off everything on its path. When it comes, it covers everything. When it comes, it resets everything. Uproot house, uproot all. Uproot everything that is unwanted in your life will be dealt with this time. Habakkuk chapter 3, going on now. Let's now look at verse 6. Verse 6 of it. He stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations. And the everlasting mountains were what? Scattered. The perpetual is did bow. His ways are what? Everlasting. That is, in every revival, perpetual ease will bow. Everlasting mountains will be scattered. What are everlasting mountains? They are long-standing challenges. Long-standing problems. 25 years, 30 years challenge, 40 years challenge. Those are everlasting mountains. Perpetual ease. Oh, the same thing is happening to everybody. Whatever it is. When the tsunami of God comes, it will sweep them all away. Are you hearing me? So it's a time of unusual appearances of God. 
unusual appearances of God. He said in verse 2 of that uh, Abacook we read, cha chapter 3, that verse 2, he said, make known, make known what? Make known your power. It's a time when God displays his power, raw display of God's power. Raw display, please hear me, behind every issue that is against you right now, there is a devil. Are you hearing me? Nothing is of his own. The problem with many of us is we get too educated and then we, we educate God out of our life. You know, things are happening and then you are busy explaining. Well, you know, if not because of this, there will not be this. There is nothing happening that Satan cannot explain. But you must know this. You will make the best of your life if you spiritualize every happening of your life. Spiritualize every happening of your life. There is a devil behind anything that is not working. That's the truth. Because the part of the justice is like a shining light. It must shine brighter and brighter. If it is not brighter, then there is a devil somewhere holding it back. A great and effectual door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. So spiritualize every issue of your life and you will make the best of life. You make the, very many people start fighting when the fight is almost over. Because while the devil was walking, he was sleeping. So he only woke up when the thing has spoiled. And now he's trying to overturn what is spoiled. But in the name of Jesus, I decree your restoration this time. In the name of Jesus. Verse 13 of that same Habakkuk chapter 3. The whole chapter. God revealed to us there. Verse 13. Now thou wentest forth. For the salvation of who? Of thy people. For salvation with thy anointed. And in order to do it. You wounded the head of the house of the wicked. Now that is. Every move of God as we have entered into this month is also a time when God will sweep in multitudes into the church. So our labor at this time is salvation of souls. That's our preoccupation. I like to see people go out of their way running after souls this time. We are going to have prayer every day here, yeah, every day. I mean, it's not church service, but for those who want to pray. Praying kingdom advancement prayer, five to six, five to six, five to six, except when there is service. So, and everyone, the other day, we all took uh, days. So, you will get, those who pick Monday, we will send you a text again tomorrow morning to remind you, you pick Monday to pray. Come by five. And those who chose evangelism on Monday, you pick the evangelism on Monday, come and go out. There will be group out there, and then everybody can go on their own. This time around, there is concentration on individuality. Nobody's going to coerce anybody. He gave one five talents, gave one two talents, gave another one one. And as soon as they all came back, the one who had five said, I've gained five more. And then he said, Enter into the joy of your Lord. All of us will enjoy promotion according to our delivery. Your delivery will determine your promotion. Your lift will be determined by your rise. How much you rise determines. I like to see someone preaching in the bus. Are you hearing Somebody organizing crusade in the market. Sweeping them in. Going to where they are to sweep them in. Are you, and you are doing Jesus proud. That's what we are on. That's the labor of the hour. Salvation of souls. Salvation of souls. The church is going from church growth to church flow. Isaiah 2, he said, nations shall flow. Micah chapter 4, the same thing. Nations shall flow unto Mount Zion. Nations shall flow. So we are going into flow. Every time there is a revival, there is a flow. In Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came, when the Spirit of God came on them, we remember 3,000 people became saved in one day. That's a flow. That's a flow. How will you love it to do a crusade 
or to just do an outreach and 3,000 people get saved by your hand in one day. You'll be dancing all your life. Is it not? You'll be rejoicing. And it's possible. It's possible. Somebody here, the spectacular will happen by your hand this time. So the labor of revival is to save souls. To save souls. To save souls. And as we are laboring, he also will be answering. He also will be reaching out. He also will be blessing us. And then verse 17. Habakkuk 3 from verse 17. From verse 17. He said there, Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail. What he's saying here is this. Your present condition notwithstanding. Don't worry about your present condition. Are you following me? And then somebody may even be wondering in his heart, okay, well, we just did the operation change of story. Maybe your story didn't change. And devil is telling you, come on now. Maybe you did one. And they are calling another one. But can I say this to you? When rain falls, it can fall on everyone. Does, but does it fall on everyone? If you are in your house, will it fall inside your house? So, but the good news is this. For every rain to fall, the cloud must form. And after every rain has fallen, the cloud will clear. But the good news is that a new cloud can form. Clouds will always form. Every time a new operation is announced, it means your cloud is forming. Get set. It means another rain wants to fall. Get set. Now, if that was not your rain, maybe this is your rain. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, forget about whatever is not working. Forget about whatever is not working. And then he said in verse 18, he said, keep rejoicing. He said, rejoice. Keep joy. Keep rejoicing. Continue to rejoice. What makes people rejoice is expectation. Despite what you are going through, you are expecting something better. So, you are not rejoicing because of what is happening. You are rejoicing in anticipation of expectation. Are you following me? Now, and then verse 19, he said, God will respond as you are rejoicing. He will now become your strength. He will take over your battle. And he will make your feet like iron's feet. He will make you walk on your high places. High places are places in life your strength can't get you to. There are promotions ahead of you that uh, your intelligence can't reach. Eh? Your strength can't get, who you know can't help you. Are you following? But yet, God has ordained you will get there. He has reserved it that only him can take you there. That's what makes him God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And these are the things we experience in a revival. Welcome to revival. Welcome to your seasons of glory. So what is a revival? Number one, a revival is a platform for divine visitation that is ordained for our supernatural change of story. It's a platform. You know, when you stand on a platform, you can now decide what to do, whether you want to jump or you want to run. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a platform, a provision, a datum for spring. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You can decide. You want to jump? You want to run? Uh, so, revival is a platform that God provides. The spirit of God is moving. The move has begun. Are you hearing me? And the tsunami is coming. Okay, what will you do with it? It can change your story, but which part of those story you want to change? Is God on the move? And you have to engage him to move you. You have to engage him to move you. Sephaniah chapter 3, reading from verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. Can you see save? Every time God comes in our midst, the result is to save. That's always the first thing. He will save. And then he will rejoice over thee with joy. It's a time always to rejoice. How much of God is with you is how much of joy you carry in your heart. 
He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. And then verse 18. He said, I will gather them that are sorrowful for the solemn assembly who are of thee to whom the reproach of it was a burden. I will gather them. So it's a time also of in gathering. God said, when I come, I'm going to look for those who have challenges. I will locate those who have troubles. I will look for them. I will gather them. I will gather them. And then verse 19, he said, I will undo all that afflict them. As I gather them, I'll be solving their problem. So it's a time of solving of problems. Meeting of challenges. Removing the mountains. Taking away the perpetual hills. Changing people's stories. From zero to surplus. From emptiness to plenty. From down to up. Change of story. But take note, he said, at that time. Give me that verse 19. He said, at that time. So it's a time thing. It's a time thing. And we have come into that time. He said, I will get them praise and fame. I will get them praise and fame. I will change their story. Your story is changing this time. Yes. I said, your story is changing this time. Yes. In the name of Jesus. When uh, Joseph was in Egypt, remember the story of how Joseph got to Egypt and how his father Jacob went with the whole family to meet him in Egypt. When Joseph was about to die, he told them, God will visit you. God will visit you. That's what he told them in Genesis 50 verse 24. God will visit you. And then we saw the drama that happened after they had stayed 430 years in Egypt. We saw how God visited. He told Moses, I am come down. That's in Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to 10. I am come down. We saw him come literally down. We saw all sorts of plague. And then we saw dramatic change of story. 430 years of labor, no pay. They were paid in one day. We saw how 3 million people came out of servitude in one day. In one day, dramatic change of story. When God comes down. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what you are experiencing. But I'm glad to let you know your story is about to change. I say your story is about to change in the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, a revival is a spiritual awakening that causes the giant in us to rise. A spiritual awakening that causes the giant in us to rise. There are great things in you. Great future God has prepared. Revival comes to unveil them. Remember, when the waves of the sea comes, it brings with it treasures from the bottom of the sea. It brings with it treasures from the bottom of the sea. And you see people picking shells, picking shells, picking shells. And if you don't pick quick, it will take it back. So it's a time of spiritual awakening. You are steered up by God in every time of revival. Steered up to engage in God. And then your engagement will bring you God's promises. What God has promised will happen in that revival. You are steered up to engage. And as you engage, you experience God's blessings. Somebody is here. Your change is right now. So it's a season for the rise of men and women of renown. Jeremiah 30 verse 21. He said the governors will come from the midst of you. That's what he said. The nobles shall be of themselves. And their governors shall proceed from the midst of them. I will cause them to draw near. That is he will turn little shots to big shots. That's what revival is about. Turning little shots to big shots. So but it begins with a spiritual quickening because as your spirit prospers, so God will bless your life. The spiritual always goes ahead of the physical. For God to improve, increase, promote you, he also will promote you in the spirit. They go together. So 
there will be spiritual awakening. Somebody is here. Your prayer life will change now. In the mighty name of Jesus. So every revival brings cure to the shame of believers. Every shame comes to an end, but it begins with spiritual awakening, spiritual quickening, spiritual awakening, spiritual quickening. Somebody said, um, if God does not move me, I move God. One prophet said that. I think it's Smith Wigglesworth. Many are waiting for God to move them. And uh, you have not been moved, you know. So why don't you move God? Somebody says, I don't feel like saving souls. I don't know how they do it. They do it by going. Go. Just go. What does it mean to go? It means walk out on your leg and go. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying? Walk out on your leg and go. Hey, I don't know how they do it. Uh, learn it on the, de on, on the job. There's nothing there. If you don't know what to say, tell them your story. Tell them your story. Everybody has a testimony. Start from there. Anything, just anything. And usually, when you go, it takes over. It will take over. It will take over. So, how do you know you are in a revival? How do you know? How do you know you are part of a revival? Number one, when there is a revival, the heart of man begins to pant after God and the interest of his kingdom. So, how do you know you are in a revival? When your heart begins to pant after God. When the things of God begin, becomes like food for you. That's when you say you are in a revival. You are not in a revival when you can't come to church. You don't come to church, you don't feel anything. You are in a revival when the word of God becomes sweet to your taste. When prayer becomes like food, that's when you know you are in a revival. That is, your affinity for God is on the increase. David said in Psalm 42 verse 1, he said, as the heart panted after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee. The heart is a small antelope that loves water. It's always thirsty, looking for water. So he said, the same way, that's how my heart is always looking for you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. So that's when you know you are in a revival. When uh, you wake up in the morning and the first thing that occurs to you is God. God. God in the morning, God in the afternoon, God in the evening. Then you are in a revival. Then you are being revived. That's what it means to be revived. The same way your wife traveled and um, you can't sleep. Your husband traveled. You can't sleep. Why? You miss him. You miss her. Okay? You are in a revival when you miss God. When you miss God. That's the, the uh, you know, for temperature. They say... You use thermometer to measure. For pressure, they use, is it barometer or something? So that is the meter to check reviver. Reviver meter. If there's any word like that. Do you miss God? You, you are not in the prayer meeting. How do you feel after it? Does your mind say, thank God. At least I can do other things. Or what now? And then you know from there. It's cheap to know if you are in a revival. Number two, when you are in a revival, you walk in the fear of God. The fear of God becomes your new lifestyle. Your new lifestyle. For every blessing from God, the fear of God comes first. He said in Psalm 112, blessed is the man that feared the Lord. And then he said, the generation of the upright shall be blessed. And then he said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Every good thing from God follows the fear of God. It follows the fear of God. So in every revival, the first deposit is the fear of God. The fear of God. You see people just start changing by themselves. People stop doing some things by themselves. Nobody appeal to you, you just stop. You just stop. 
people have change of heart. The spirit of the fear of the Lord takes over the air. There is a baptism of the fear of God. So some things you are doing and you are still doing, she will tell you if you are in a revival or not. If you are in a revival or not. God told Moses he was visiting the Israelites. And Moses told them, wash your clothes, clean up. For three days they were cleaning up to wait for God. Three days they were cleaning up to wait for God. So the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And that spirit is a wonder. That was the spirit that raised Jesus from the grave. That was Romans 1.4 tells us. The spirit of holiness. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. That's the spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. Is, is, the pre, is the John the Baptist of God's power. Fear of the Lord must go ahead before the power of God will come. The power of God follows the fear of the Lord. So when there is a revival, the fear of the Lord is the first feeling. Everybody begins to cringe. They begin to change. They begin to turn. People begin to imbibe new habits and then they begin to give, live old habits and begin to make up their mind and make decisions. This is how you know if you are in a revival because the revival is on. It's on. So whether you are there or not, you are the one to, you should know. You should know. But in the name of Jesus, nobody will be left behind. So what is in a revival for us? What do you gain? Number one, every revival is a spiritual launching pad to your high places. It's a spiritual launching pad to your high places. I said earlier that your high places are those places where your hand can't get to. That's why it's called high. High is beyond the reach of your hand. Only God's hand can take you there. Are you hearing me? So it's an opportunity to rise. To rise behind your strength to go beyond your power. To do more than your ability can afford. That's what every revival affords. That's what every... There are people here now who should have broken through by now. But you are waiting for many things. Well, uh, maybe if I get money. Maybe if I have help. Maybe if this. Maybe. All your maybes. This is the time for them. Since it's maybe to you, eh, launch it out. Serve God at this time and position it and watch how God will take you above it. Are you following what I'm saying? So it's a spiritual launching pad to your high places in life. And then number two, every revival culminates in supernatural restoration of your redemptive dignity. Like I said earlier, it's a reboot session. A reboot session. You are using your phone, you are using your, your computer or whatever, and then it hangs. When it hangs, that means all the senses have overturned. They, <laughs> you have confused it. It's, you have confused it. So, there's always a button to press. And then you press, it will go off, and then it will restart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It will restart. That's a reboot. Restart means everything is rearranged to begin again. Are you following me? So every time of revival is a reboot session. God who made you himself, even if it means to remake you, he will do it. Whatever it would take to bring your desire home, grant what you are looking for, it will be done. The redemptive dignity of the believer is restored at revival. Look at it. Remember the story of Peter. Peter, in front of a little girl after Jesus died, he denied Jesus. He swore he didn't know him. But after the revival in Acts chapter 2, the same Peter became a lion. He preached. He said, the Jesus whom your father has killed is the one I'm preaching now. That's what he said. The same man who couldn't even mention the name Jesus. And then we saw 3,000 people saved. What a change. What a change. So that's what revival brings with it. It turns shaking reeds to rocks. Like Peter. So every shame will be rolled away this time. And then number three, 
We enjoy express answers to prayers in revival. Express answers, quick answers. Why? Because God is near. God is nearer than before. God, there is no prayer you pray this July, God will answer you immediately. So take note of it. We are in a revival. This is God's season and time of glory for us. And you are going from one glory to another glory to another glory in the name of Jesus. Now, today is our covenant day of open doors. I decree this morning that every door shut against you shall be open. Look at the reality of closed doors. Luke chapter 5 is an example. Remember the story of Peter? He fished all night. He caught nothing. He caught nothing. What does that mean? That means the door was closed. He was a fisherman. He had been fishing all his life. But on that particular day, the door was closed. The door shut against him. He was packing his net in defeat. And then Jesus stepped into his boat. And before him, every gate is lifted. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gate. Lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And let the king of glory come in. So gates can be shut. Doors can be shut against people. We saw that in Peter. Until Jesus stepped in. The doors were not open. So, God's presence with you is the secret to opening of every door. If you can retain God with you, do what it takes to keep God with you, then you will not cease to enjoy open doors. You will go from door to door all your life. All your life. All your life. All your life. He took Jesus stepping into his boat to end his drought. He took Jesus stepping into his boat. Somebody is here from this service. What has not answered till now will begin to answer for you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Two things here to retain God's presence. Number one, walking in obedience of faith ends you God's presence. And God's presence with you will open any door. What do I mean? Obeying the word of God. Doing what the word of God says. The power behind every closed door is darkness. Darkness cannot stop the way of light. You come into light as you obey what God says. When you walk in the truth of the word of God, he said, can two walk together except they be agreed? Then you are walking in the light. And you walk in light. No darkness can stop your way. The cheapest way to accommodate God is to walk in the light of his word. To walk in the light of his word. To walk in the light of his word. To walk in the light of the governor. Or is he president? You are in his entourage. There is no roadblock that can block you. What opens for him opens for you. They just say, okay, God bless enter. And usually all those entourage, there is a, an escort in front, there's an escort at the back. The back escort is at the back of the last vehicle. Are you following? So when the last uh, second escort passes, they know that all the entourage have gone. So anyone after, they can stop you. But you inside it, no one can stop you. When they salute him, they are saluting you too. They may not like your face, but they have no choice. Whatever they have against you does not matter. But because you are in that entourage, you pass. And that's the key to enjoying open doors. Many of the doors shut against you may even have a legitimate reason to be shut against you. But being in the company of the Most High, hence you opens door. It doesn't matter how many devils are against you, they open the door for you to go. And then secondly, active partnership with God through soul winning. 
active partnership with God through soul winning. Jesus said in John 8, 29, he said, my father has not left me alone. Why? He said, because I do always the things that please him. I do always the things that please him. So, Jesus kept doing what pleases God in order to retain God. And listen to this, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing her? Why? Because God was with him. Acts 10, 38. So he enjoyed breakthrough everywhere because he retained God with him. A cheap way to retain God is to be on the go. Either on your knees in prayer or you are on the go saving souls. Always on the go. When you go for him, he goes with you. When you go for him, he goes with you. Now, in order to keep enjoying open doors all your life, number one, be born again. And remain born again. Remain born again. Being born again, once not ever, he's not being born again all the time. Even though, well, scripturally, um, we are born again once, you are born again all the time, but very many people gave their life to God and they took it back from God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They took it back from him. You know, what you do is what determines if God will be with you. There are things you have done that has made him leave you to yourself. So you can't say you are born again at such a time. So very many people need to rededicate their life and do it this morning. Be born again and remain born again. Whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the secret that overcome the world, even our faith. First John 5, 4. So be born again and remain born again. Number two, continue to walk in the fear of God. Walk in the fear of God. Walk in the fear of God. Joseph, everywhere he went, doors were open for him. He was a slave. They sold him as a slave, yet he became master slave. His master gave everything to him. So much so, his master's wife desired him. What a slave. What a slave. He became prisoner. Even in the prison, everything was committed to his hand. What was his secret? Genesis 42, 18. Joseph said, I fear God. I fear God. When you fear God, every devil will fear you. Are you. Every devil will fear you. Every devil will fear you. I fear God. And he went from open door to open door. And then number three, remain in love with God. Remain in love with God. Continue to love God. John 14, 21. He said, if you obey me, then that's the proof you love me. And if you love me, I will manifest myself unto you. So the love of God makes you a candidate for open doors. Because when you love him, uh, you become inseparable from him. I said in the first service, I said in uh, Yoruba, they call uh, lovers, they call them korikosu. That is, I don't see him, I can't sleep. I don't see her, I can't sleep. So lovers are in great affinity of themselves. That's why Jesus said, God has not left me alone because I do always the things that please him. He loves me. Why? I'm always doing what pleases him. So love God and then you will enjoy his company everlasting. And as he companies with you, no door will shut against you. In the name of Jesus. Number four, be committed to God's leading. Let God lead you. God always leads us to where he is. Every time you are led by God, he leads you to where he is present, where he is. He leads us to himself. He doesn't lead us away from himself. So that's the wisdom in always waiting for God's leading. No door can close against him. Because when you are led by him, he goes with you. So you are assured, breakthrough anywhere. What stops others can't stop you. What is refused others can't be refused you. Why? Because the one with you cannot be refused. So that's it. Always let God lead you. Wait 
Let God speak to you. Ask him, lead me in this matter. Show me what to do. Show me where to turn. And then you can enjoy open doors all the way. And finally, enter into a covenant to keep serving God and the interest of his kingdom as a lifestyle. Keep serving God. Keep serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Keep serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Keep serving God and the interest of his kingdom. And um, as you serve him, he will serve you in return. It's the cheapest way. Of course, if you are useful to me, I will do anything possible to keep you functioning. When you are useful to God, he will do all to keep you there. To keep you there. Can I share with you a secret? Where you are right now is a platform for you to serve God. That is where you are, whatever you are doing, is a platform for you to serve God. God wants to be served through where you are, through what you are doing. Are you following me? And as you do that, you have guaranteed that no devil can move you. You have guaranteed that your next placement is certain. Because when God lifts you, no devil can lift you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now I pray in the name of Jesus, you will never be a victim of open door, locked doors. No door will ever, ever be locked against you again. From this hour, I command that every locked door be opened for you. Whatever is behind those locked doors, let them be uprooted now. Whatever power is responsible, resisting those doors, let them be crushed that you may go. In the mighty name of Jesus, for Moses to return back to Egypt, Pharaoh had to die. He said, God spoke to him. He said, Pharaoh, the one that was there that time has died. So you can go back now. Now, whatever won't let you go forward will die that you may cross. I decree in the name of Jesus in this season and time of revival, go forward now. Make progress right now. Enter every door freely without restriction. In the name of Jesus, I can see somebody is here with chains on the feet. Chains on the feet and with a weight on the chain. He thinks he's moving freely, but there is a weight. So it's restricted movement. Restricted movement. Now, by the authority placed on God's servant, Bishop David Oedeku, extended to me by privilege on which I stand, I command. Let those chains be broken now. The authority behind the chains, let them be put to shame now. Let them be put in chains now. In the name of Jesus. Enter every door freely. From glory to glory. From height to height. And be blessed. In the name of Jesus. In one minute you are here. You have not given your life to Jesus. I'd like to very quickly pray with you. You are not born again. You are not free. You are still under satanic hold. No matter what has been said there, you have said amen. You can reach out there and the devil will take it out of you. You have to be born again to come in his care. So every head bowed, please, and every eyes closed, you have not given your life to Jesus. Can you please lift up your hand? And then in case you have been born again before, but somewhere along the way, you lost your salvation, you need to rededicate yourself back to God. Why not also lift up your hand? Thank God for that hand. You are lifting it up, lift it up properly. Let Jesus see you. Let every devil know you have left them behind. Lift up that hand in the name of Jesus. And say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. This day, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, wash me clean from all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I am born again. Now, if you pray that prayer with me, pick your bag and Bibles. Quickly come to the altar here. Come here. Come here quickly. 
Come on here. Don't wait for anybody. Don't wait for anybody. Come, come. Just come here. Come here. Don't be the last to get here. Get here now. Get here now. Get here now. For those who prayed that prayer, and for those who, who, have, who didn't pray it but still want to pray it, come on here. Come on here. I want to give my life to Jesus. Come, come, come. I want to be born again. Or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. Come, come on now. From wherever you are, come, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. At the same time, if this is your first Sunday of fellowship with us, we welcome you earlier, but we'd like to bless you from the altar. Wherever you are, can you please, in honor of Jesus, who brought you this morning, pick your bag and Bibles and come also to this side of the altar for a blessing from the altar. Come very fast. Come quickly in honor of Jesus. This is your first Sunday of worship with us. And you are right here. Come, come. Jesus, who invited you, wants to meet with you. Here, here. Give Jesus the praise. Give Jesus the praise. Give Jesus the glory. Give Jesus the praise. 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 Jesus the praise. One more thing. You came in after the offering was taken. You still have your offering with you. Can you lift it up? You are still willing to give that offering? Lift it up. In the name of Jesus, that offering is blessed. You are blessed forever. In the name of Jesus. Or then walk us quickly. Please rush. Get those offerings. We are pressing for time this morning. Every one of you, you are welcome to Living Faith Church, the home of signs and wonders. Those of you who just got saved, believe me, you made the right decision. You will never regret it. From today is forward motion. Every area of your life all areas of oppression has come to an end. Jesus has taken over in the name of Jesus. And for those of us who are worshipping with us for the first time, listen to me. Jesus is the one who invited you. And because he has something here for you, there is a blessing here that belongs to you. He's written in your name. There is no mistake about your coming. Now bow down your head as I pray. Father, I pray, what you have reserved for this one, release it for them now. Lord, because they have come, they will not misstep. They won't be taken back by the back door. Cause them to remain and to stay. And in the name of Jesus, I decree a from glory to glory experience for every one of them. Every time you come, something new testimony will follow you. In the name of Jesus. We have a little reception we have prepared for you. That pastor over there, please lift up your hand and let them see you. You need to go with him. They have some one or two things to show you. Just go this way. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Is somebody excited? Is somebody praising the Lord at all? Is somebody giving him the glory? Lift up those hands and give him thanks as we close in the service this morning. Give him the praise. Go in peace this morning. Be blessed everywhere you turn. Remember all doors have opened for you. Nothing shuts against you anymore. So, hear this. Wherever they told you no last week, go there again from tomorrow. Are you here? Because the story has changed. The story has changed. And as you go, you are going with God. No door can close against him. No door can close. So, I'm waiting for your new testimony. I say, I'm waiting for your new testimony. You are blessed of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Remember, we will be praying every day for those of us who wrote names to pray on certain days during operation change of story. We will send you text tomorrow to remind you. You wrote Monday, you come and pray. And then whatever day you want to pray, just come. Just come. Or you want to pray on your own, no problem. We are going to prepare uh, prayer leaflets. Everybody will get it. And then you can pray on your own. One hour, two hours, praying kingdom advancement prayer. Or you want to go on your own to save souls. Great. Why not? Handbills will always be here. We are going on a serious printing of handbills also. And then you want to go in the group 
come by five. By five, between five and six, prayer will be going on. Those who will be going out will be going out. So you come, you want to go with the group, and the Lord bless you as you do that in the name of Jesus. Shall we share the goodness and fellowship? Surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. Praise the Lord and more than a conqueror. Congratulations. Tell five people, welcome to your seasons of glory. Amen.